Hey, this is Derek Murphy. A while ago, I made a video about how to publish a book in Google Docs, and I was kind of stumbling my way through it. I got a few things wrong. So actually, it's getting some traffic, and I wanted to kind of update with a newer video that goes through some of the features that I missed before. So really quick, if you have a novel that you've maybe uploaded a Word document into Google Docs, um, or you've just done it from scratch, the basic thing is that you want your headers to use an H1 or an H2 tag. That way, they will show up over here in the navigation pane. And that is over here if you go to View and Show Document Outline. That's what this is over here. But that'll only show up if you're actually using the H1 tags. If you convert to ebook later, which is also pretty easy to do, you just go over here to File and download as an EPUB. Um, Amazon used to want its own Mobi format, its own kind of unique ebook format, but Amazon now just uses EPUB. So you can make an EPUB and upload it, and it's probably going to work. As long as you do you know, most basic things, um, you can't really embed fonts in EPUBs very easily. That will always display on Kindle devices. Uh, so you generally want to keep these simple anyway. You can do a lot of special, you know, if you really want your ebook to look really nice, you've got to use Vellum, which looks amazing, but it's only for Macs, or Atticus, which is for PC, which gives you some more options. I usually do like book formatting. Well, I, I would usually do it. Like I would upload my EPUB into Sigil and then I would fine tune it myself and do a lot of stuff, but that's way too much effort and work and it can create kind of a buggy ebook anyway. So you want to do it easier, um, even if it doesn't really look as pretty as you want it. If you want it to be really pretty, I would check out using Vellum. You can even use it with a PC if you use Mac and Cloud, um, or Atticus, which is newer, but it's adding a lot of new features, and I think that one's going to be pretty good as well. Otherwise, your ebook's probably going to be sort of basic, and that's actually OK. And what I was basically saying in the last video was that I like having this navigation pane. If you want to write a book in Google Docs, um, it's not that difficult because even for like nonfiction, you could have your chapter titles and your subtitles and whatever. And if you use H1 or H2 tags, then they're going to show up over here in your outline, which makes it really easy to, at least you don't have to scroll through your whole document. You can just go to the chapter that you want. When I'm writing a book, I will usually, when I'm writing it, I'll just as like what has to happen. So like um, waking up for school or whatever happens in the first chapter. And then maybe the, the things that happen like big fight or stolen backpack, um, whatever it is, that way I can easily go to the scenes that I want without trying to remember, you know, what's in chapter one, what's in chapter two, et cetera. However, one of the downsides of the Google Docs is you can't drag and drop these sections around. In Microsoft Word, with the navigation pane, you actually can. So that's why I still mostly prefer Microsoft Word. Um, the nice thing about Google Docs is it's there on all of your devices. So you know, in theory, it would make so much more sense for me to write on my PC than if I wanted to go out for coffee with my laptop or even an iPad with a Bluetooth keyboard, which is usually how I prefer to do my writing, although not my editing. When you're writing, you typically want a smaller screen that limits your focus. And when you're editing, you know, I really need to have all my comments because when I go through edits, it's not just about fixing things. It's mostly about flagging things with comments, um, which I think I can, I mean, I can add edits and comments here, which is pretty great. But like if I was on my iPad trying to look over this document, going through to check the comments and fixing them, that's probably not something I could do on a smaller screen. Um, but the point is that like, if you're just writing, you could switch between devices really easily to get the writing done, and then you could import somewhere else if you want to format. I don't think I could format a book for print very well in Google Docs, although I might look into that deeper. It's been a while since I use Google Docs, and they update quite a bit. Um, so I was just looking at insert headers, footers, header. And then here it does show me, if I click up here on the header, um, I can choose a different first page. So like if this was a chapter one, which would probably be 
you have to be careful with your chapter headings. Like right now, this indent is way too big. I'd have to go to format, um, remove space, add space, custom spaces, indentation options. Basically, you don't want any indentation. It's interesting. So I also have here, this is what I was going to talk about next. You have the first line, the hanging, and then none. Um, so what I would try to do is set this for zero because it's the chapter style. And I'd make this pretty big. And the reason I'm setting the indentation for zero is because I actually want this centered. So that way my chapter heading is going to be centered. I would also change the color so that it's not blue. I could even change it to like light gray, um, which would look pretty cool even in print. And I could choose you know a different font um, or whatever. So going back to the headers, def what usually you want to do is you have a different first page for your chapter pages where the text starts. Um, and then I would add you know a lot of spacing. If you haven't watched my book formatting videos, I've got a lot of videos about that. But you could space this out and make it look nice. And the point is that on the other headers, that's where I would try to insert something like page numbers or you know, headers of footers, you'd probably have your author name and your book title. So I don't know that you know this will look good enough. I don't know if I can change the size um, of all of this, but there does seem to be a way that I could, you know, set up my headers and maybe maybe my footers. I think I'd have to insert a footer, then go to insert page numbers. I would imagine this would be pretty tricky. So this is already showing me 172 pages, even though that's not right. That's like the total count. Um, anyway, if I try to figure this out, I might make another video. I think I could, you know, fumble through formatting a book for print in Google Docs. The only thing I haven't really found yet was how to change the page size because I would want my entire document page size to be six by nine or five point two by by eight. So actually, I think I would go here to file and down here to document details or page setup. There it is. So page setup takes me here. I could change it to um, the size I want. I could change the margins that I want. It's usually about 0.25. It um, doesn't look like it's going to let me set a gutter, which is that extra space. It also doesn't look like it's going to let me set a custom size. So these sizes aren't actually quite book sizes. So unless I can add my own custom size, it doesn't look like this is going to work for print books, um, which isn't a big surprise, actually, because I, I wasn't even thinking I could make it this far with formatting my book, you can actually do quite a bit. So, you know, if you want to print out some samples, um, A5 is not a terrible size if you can find a printer that would print A5. I, I just don't think it's one of Amazon's or it's not a common print on demand size, but I haven't checked for a while, it's possible. It's there, um, at least some print on demand services. Um, anyway, so I got kind of distracted with all that print stuff. It is kind of encouraging to see how much, how far I was able to get. But the main point I was trying to make here was if I'm trying to create an EPUB to publish on Amazon, one of the things that you want to do is set a custom style with indentations for your paragraph. So your first paragraph is typically not going to have an indentation. So I'd go to Format, uh, Decrease Indent. I had to go to the indentation options and then this first line special indent, I'll just set to zero. Um, and then I can right click this and update normal text to match, um, which is interesting. That's not actually what I want to do. I want to create a separate style so that, you know, there's normal text and then there's also first paragraph text. So I'm looking for a way to actually do that. I have normal text. 
title, subtitle, heading six. I'm looking for a way to add a new style that isn't listed here, and I'm not sure that I'm going to find one. Yeah, so it seems like even though I got a little bit further than I did with my last video, I was also a little too excited thinking that this was going to work the way that I wanted it to. Um, and I didn't notice that one limiting feature, which is that I can't really add a new text style. Um, I think the only solution would be something like if I, for example, chose like a, a heading six and I just completely change the style to make heading six actually the second paragraph style that I wanted. Um, my point was basically that typically you want the first paragraph not indented and you want all the rest of the normal body text to be indented. So for normal body text, I can still go to align and indent indentation options. I'll set it to 0.3, which is pretty normal. And then I could right click it and update normal text to match, oh, which is going to work in every paragraph except this one. So I guess the solution here, um, which is fine actually, is just that you know you do your entire book this way and you set the indentations the way that you want, and then you just go through each chapter. I'd have to get rid of them. Um, I screwed some stuff up with these, these headers or footers, trying to do stuff for print. Um, if you convert this to an EPUB, those headers and footers shouldn't save. They shouldn't display anyway, because they don't display in ebooks. Um, but I'm going to get rid of them anyway, because they're kind of distracting. Uh, and so what I was trying to do was, I should also right click this one update heading one to match. So that way I could really quickly go through and find chapter two. It doesn't actually look like that style worked. Uh, there it is. So I just have to highlight it and change it. So basically I'd, I'd go through, and this is formatting stuff. Like th this doesn't matter if you were just writing the book, if you're just using Google Docs to sprint or to get your words in, but specifically, if you're formatting your book using Google Docs, which is not amazing, but let's say you don't have other options and your whole book is in Google Docs and you want to just convert it to an EPUB and publish, um, this is kind of the way you would do it. So I'd set up you know, these chapter headings to whatever style that I want, and I'd go through and make sure that they all look how I want them. There are some fonts in here, um, nothing really amazing. But I can go to add more fonts, and then I think I can go through all of Google Fonts. And Google Fonts, you know, does have some decent ones, depending on what I'm trying to do or what the style. I could show all scripts anyway. So I could change some unique fonts and change the color if I wanted to. Right click it update heading one to match, then all my headings are going to look like that, which looks pretty good. Um, I don't know that these Google fonts will show up the way that, that I want them to. If I convert this to an EPUB and I upload it to Amazon, that's something you have to test. Um, and then with chapters, you would just highlight the first chapter, go to Format, Align, Indent, Indentations, Options, first line set to zero. Um, and because I'm doing this selectively and not universally, my first chapter has no indent like this, and all my other chapters do have the indent that I set. So I would do all the formatting first, and then once your book is done, and uh, all the writing first, once your book is done and you're trying to clean it up, um, these are the steps I would take. Basically just first line and title heading of each chapter. A um, couple more things I thought were kind of cool that I'll point out. They do have a pretty decent spell check. Um, they also have, you can go through and review the suggested edits if you're working with an editor, if you're working with someone else. That's another benefit of Google Docs is it's really easy to share with a co-writer or an editor or somebody else. 
Um, the other thing I could do, I saw a friend just today talking about um, talking about dictation because dictation can be amazing if you figure it out. So I'm going to see if I can test this. Probably, probably not because I'm making this video. And if I click on allow, it's going to start typing. But let me try it. And if I have to, I'll just stop the video where it is. So this might be the last tip about dictating with Google Docs. So I have allowed my microphone to connect to the Google Docs. And now as long as I speak pretty quickly, uh, sorry, I speak slowly, I don't really know how to back up or delete or edit something, but that's something that I could do in revision later. Um, actually, at my normal speaking voice, and sometimes I tend to speak really quickly if I go off on a tangent and rattle off a bunch of historical trivia. I'm kind of just testing this to see how well it'll pick up my voice. It's doing a pretty good job. If I was deliberate, I don't know that I can write um, fiction this way. I've never really tried dictating fiction, but it's surprisingly doing pretty well for Google Docs dictation. No fancy dictation software or anything. Um, it's doing a surprisingly decent job. So someday I might have to train myself to try to write fiction with dictation. Um, I actually like this because I've used dictation software in the past and it's really tricky to you know, get it all right and get it set up. And I don't know where the text is going. This way it's going straight into my Google Doc document. It'll be accessible to any of my devices. And that's pretty awesome. Anyway, that's something I'm going to have to experiment with. Um, I don't know if you could hear all of that or if you could just see the text popping up on the screen. Uh, but it was kind of fun. So those are some things you can do in Google Docs. It's actually surprisingly robust, a lot more than it was a few years ago. Uh, Microsoft Word hasn't really changed in like a decade or two. And it's a big program, so it does a lot of things. But it can be a little overwhelming and buggy, especially when you're doing formatting. I personally, I think Vellum is just about perfect for formatting, even though it's limiting. Um, it's so easy to use and it looks so good. Whereas I can do a lot of customizable things in Google Docs or Microsoft Word, but it's such a pain and it takes so much time. Like even this, um, you know, I'd have to choose my, the nice thing is basically once you've changed your style, like once all of my headers are using the H1 tag, um, I could, for example, decide I want to try a different font. I can make this really big. Uh, and then I could right click it, update headings to match. And then all of my chapters would look the same, uh, which is nice. You can also do that in Microsoft Word, but first you have to go through and actually you know, do everything. Um, so this does give you more flexibility than a formatting software like Vellum or Atticus, but uh, it does take a little bit of time also, most of the beginning to just go through and you know fix your styles. I think for EPUB, this would work really, really well. Um, like I mentioned for print, the jury is out a little bit, specifically because um, I may have trouble setting a custom page size for the book size that I want. If I figure out a way to do that, or if anybody else knows a way that I missed for um, basically changing the document size to exactly what I would need to get. Um, I'm not sure if that's an option, but that would be interesting to figure out. Otherwise, I hope this video helps. Um, mostly, it's just an update to my other video, which, like I said, wasn't that great, and I missed a lot of things. Uh, hopefully, this shows you some of the cool things you can do in Google Docs specifically for book writing. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.